Elsie, what's the matter? Elsie! So, Watson. Hmm? You do not propose to invest in South African securities. How on earth do you know that? Now, confess, you are utterly taken aback. I am. I should make you sign a paper to that effect. Why? Because in a few minutes you will say it is all so absurd and simple. <laughs> I should say nothing of the kind. You see, my dear Watson, it is not really difficult to construct a series of influences, each dependent upon its predecessor and each simple in itself. If after doing so one simply knocks out the central influences and presents one's audience with the starting point and the conclusion, one may produce a startling, though possibly a meretricious effect. I can tell by an inspection of the groove between your left forefinger and thumb, that you've decided not to invest your small capital in the gold fields. I can see no connection. Very likely not. But I can quickly give you a close connection. Here are the missing links in the very simple chain. You had chalk between your forefinger and thumb when you returned from the club last night. You put chalk there when you play billiards to ease the cue. You never play billiards except with Thurston. Now, Thurston, you told me four weeks ago, had an option on some South African security which expired in a month and which he desired you to share with him. Your checkbook is locked in my drawer and you have not asked for the key, so you do not propose to invest your money in that manner. <laughs> How absurdly simple. Quite so. Every problem is absurdly simple when it is explained to you. Pump, 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 pump. Holmes, why are you so cheerful? You're unemployed, you have no case to solve. Now, normally, that produces black moods and the infernal lethargy of the cocaine bottle. You have not used the logical principles which I constantly expound. Sherlock Holmes is cheerful, so Sherlock Holmes must have a case. Pa! See. What you can make of that, friend Watson. Why, Holmes, it's a child's drawing. Ah, is that your idea? Well, what else should it be? Well, that is what a Mr. Hilton Cubitt of Riddlingthorpe Manor, Derbyshire, is anxious to know. That conundrum came by the first post, and he is to follow by the next train. Cubit. No, no, I have already looked him up, Watson. His family has owned land in Derbyshire for over 500 years, so I presume that Mr. Cubit is as respectable as he is worthy. With a fresh face, an open countenance, and wearing a brown bowler hat. 
Oh, no, you cannot possibly know that. Really, Holmes? Uh, you will stay and keep a record of the case. My dear fellow. Thank you, Mrs. Hudson. This way, Mr. Cubitt. Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Hilton Cubitt. Well, this is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. Dr. Watson, sir. How do you do? Do sit down, Mr. Cubitt. Thank you. So, what do you make of it, gentlemen? This thing. Have you had time to study it? Absurd little figures dancing in a line. It's a childish prank. Why do you attach importance to something so trivial? I don't, Mr. Holmes. I, I never should. No, no it, it's, it's my wife, you see. She... Uh... Go on, Mr. Cubitt. You're with friends. It, it's frightened her almost to death. She says nothing, tries to appear normal, but... I've never seen anyone so upset. In white chalk on a garden seat. Mm. It is a precise copy. No, it's as exact as I could make it. I did think it might be the stable boy, but the lad denied it. If there's any danger threatening my wife, Mr. Holmes, I'd spend my last penny to protect her. Do sit down, Mr. Cubitt. You smoke, Mr. Cubitt? Uh, yes. Uh, no, 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 I won't, thank you. Tell us about your wife, Mr. Cubitt. Well, uh, I've always lived in Derbyshire, Riddlingthorpe Manor, near Matlock. I was a bachelor and thought I'd remain one, until three years ago I came down to London on a visit. It's a rare thing for me, but... Well, I had a mind to see the Queen's Golden Jubilee. I, I put up at a boarding house in Russell Square, because Parker... He's the vicar of our parish. He, he was staying there. There was also a young American lady staying there. A, a Patrick was her name, Elsie Patrick. Well, we were both alone and we became friends. Did the sights and that. At your expense? Well, certainly not. Are you suggesting... No, he's not, Mr. Cubitt, not at all. Was this Miss Elsie Patrick in London merely for the Jubilee? No, no, no. She'd been here some time. She'd tired of America, travelled about, and finally settled in England. Well, not to make a labour of it. Before my holiday was over, I was as much in love as any man ever has been. To my surprise and joy, she... she reciprocated my feelings. And we were married. Excellent. Quietly, in a, in a register office. You think I'm mad, Mr. Holmes, taking a wife in such a fashion, knowing nothing about her, or...? Explain, Mr. Cubitt. And come to the point. Oh, uh, yes. In fact, it was on the very day of our marriage. Nothing could have made me unhappy. Nothing on that day. But now I look back. It was odd. Elsie?